hello guys today I'm going to be showing you equipment that you will need as a beginning artist or an illustrator these are the, some of the few things that I got for myself I would just advise that if you're just if you're beginning don't spend too much money this is items that I've collected over the years I would say within the first year which was last year when I started and started researching about um, things that I would need from different artists on YouTube and from books that I read. So I'm going to start quickly just to show you what I think that you would need. Um, I'm going to start with brush. This is a toddler brush. I use it when I, when I illustrate to wipe off erase eraser marks or eraser residue off my watercolor or my um, sketchbook. I just use it to wipe off all the debris that is on my sketchbook. Next is erasers. Eraser comes in many forms and shapes. This is a kneading eraser. I've had this for a while. This, once you draw on your, you transfer any drawing from your trace paper. For example, let me show you. I'm, I'm reaching for my tracing paper and my watercolor paper. When you trace this on your watercolor paper, ready to transfer here, you don't want this drawing to be very dark on your watercolor paper. So when you trace it and it comes, you just take this and you just need it to just take out some of the drawing marks because when you're doing watercolor painting you don't want it to be so dark because you don't want it to show through your watercolor so this is a kneading eraser i got this for my baby from amazon and then next is just a plain regular eraser also from amazon and this is one of the, my favorites this is my electric eraser i enjoy using it it's once i push this button it spins and to change it, it comes with different heads. That's how simple it is to change. Just push this down together and slide it in there. And it does what it's supposed to do. Let me show you. I'm just going to quickly use it to show how I use it. So there it is. That's what it does. It's an electric eraser. It comes with a charger. But so after you've had it now for five months and I charge it only once this I really like because it also has this really small heads that comes with it and it comes with a lot also this I got from Amazon I'm gonna leave a link to it and a compass is the next thing that we we need this is also from Amazon I love this compass because it's easy to open and when I want to close it I just push these two buttons and it closes. Why you? Someone might say, why do you need a compass? A compass, when I started doing my research and I started learning from one of the artists that got her book, she recommended using, drawing a circle first when you're going to illustrate. When you draw a circle, let's say for example, you're gonna illustrate a flower, you draw a circle first, two circles, and you draw a line. Straight horizontally and sideways side to side and in that circle that's where you put all your illustration for a flower for example and since then I've used it to practice drawing and it has really helped me a lot practicing my flower uh, drawing and my illustration so when you're done illustrating that you can use like for example why I like as I mentioned this use it to wipe to just clean off the circles Okay, next is my HB pencils. One is just enough. You don't really need to get a lot, but this came in a set that I got, I had years ago. I would say this is about seven years ago now. These are all B pencils. What do we use B pencil for? B pencils, I, from my research, they are to shade, to show you to shades if you have a picture of an uh a fruit you're going to illustrate you can use this b pencils to shade 
where you have your shadows and when you're done you can use this blender to blend out all the shadows that you're trying to show on your either your flower or your fruits and I have here B pencil starts from B uh, 2B 3B 4B 5B and 6B but I you don't have to get all of them one is just enough next is my mechanical pencils I like using mechanical pencils I got this from Amazon I've enjoyed using them since I got them and they start from point three to point four to point five seven and nine and as the number indicates the thickness or should I say the fatness of the lead inside this ones are very they're slightly heavy but they have once you just push this button it comes out and you can change the lead pencil in there it's very heavy and it has erasers at the bottom and um, you can see the numbers at the bottom I enjoy doing them for those of you that don't like when you're illustrating or you're drawing you don't like sharpening your pencils mechanical pencils are very good to have Sec next is your brushes this is a three over zero should I say three over zero pencil round by Princeton I use Princeton because the prices are affordable and I enjoy using them because they're synthetic for those of you that don't want to use animal brushes um, or brushes made from animal synthetic brushes are good and Princeton is one of the the best out there um, the three over zero is for fine details like if you want to make dots on a illustrator this is very very good for that and the 10 is also a big brush this does a lot with you know coverage first layer if you're trying layering or you're using it for any kind of illustration this is also good and this is a Montblier flat brush it is also used for washes when you want to do wet on wet this is good to start the process to wet the surface of your watercolor paper and this is number two two inches I have another one here and this one is another wash brush this one is three quarter and it's a smaller version so the bigger the number the size and the inches of the brushes so the next is your spray bottle this is just the old bottle that I had that I used to activate the paint on my watercolor so from this we go to the watercolor I'm using um, Daniel Smith it is a professional grade watercolor but for those of you that cannot afford this because Daniel Smith is one of the best in the market but can be very expensive you can start with De La, uh, Winston and Newton they have a good brand and very good coverage and I like them so far but Daniel Smith is one of the best out there for professional grade and this I use it to wet the watercolor when I want to start using them another if you don't like these are half pans half pan meaning this is the size they come in this little cases right here some other brands label or they put the names and the color of their of the watercolor in here but this it doesn't they have their own little indicator to show you the names and the uh, if it's opaque or if it's it's just light fast so this goes in here and these are half pens and so don't some of you might not like this and you might prefer the tube these are tube watercolors and this brand is called my my Mary blue I hope I'm pronouncing it right these are tube watercolors and I'm collecting my memory blue gradually by saving money up they are also expensive this brand I believe if I've heard that is not toxic 
for those of us that are sensitive this is a very good brand and when you have this tube you have a you need a place to put them in i'm going to reach out for my ceramic palette you can either use a ceramic palette or a plastic palette a plastic palette like this this is a plastic palette so you can put this in here and let it dry you can put them in there let it dry or you can put it in your ceramic palette and use it and it, it, it can dry up you can let it dry up and when you're ready again you can just put a little bit of water I'm gonna just show you and to activate your paint it will definitely it does activate once you add water okay some people don't like um, leaving their water tubes like this on a ceramic palette but you can also use a ceramic palette to mix and from there to your watercolor book right there and one thing I definitely recommend if you have brush is your brush holder a brush holder is very important because it would help you save the life of your brush of your brush once you rinse in your jar you just save it like that on a flat surface you don't want to store your brush like this back in the jar standing up always want to lay it flat and let it dry the water will not go through the bristles here and can damage the glue that's holding the um, bristles of your brush so you always want to store it like this so next is my jars I have this one and two I was able to spend money on this I mean because I could afford it at that time but if you don't want to spend a lot on your equipment just get this from Dollar Tree this is from Dollar Tree so you always want to have two jars once for rinsing the first rinse and then the second one to rinse your brush because this you would always use to, to make to first wash and this also for the next one so this is just from Dollar Tree. You don't have to go spend money to buy this, but this came in a set for me. This is my set. This is how I purchased this three. So um, in my previous video, I did show you guys how, where I got this from and how the seller sold each um, pieces to me. This was a set from Etsy. And the last thing that I'm gonna show you is just a masking fluid. Masking fluid is if you're a little illustrating, like I'm about to do this illustrating. I'm gonna paint this hole here, but I want to showcase this water water drop here. And I don't want to paint that water drop the same color of the fruit. So I'm gonna use a masking tape. And one of the quick tips I have for you guys, if you, masking tape are very known to damage brushes. Once you dip it into your brush, a lot of people have complained how it damaged your brush. But one thing I found from one of the my teachers is that you can dip your, brush first in just water and soap and dip it into your masking fluid and just indicate the areas you don't want your whole color to be on it will save the life of your brush it won't damage the bristles of your brush and lastly watercolor pencils some people you prefer to use watercolor some people prefer to use pencils color pencils so this is my Prisma color pencils I've had it for years I would say this is going almost 10 years yeah and but I prefer watercolor and you have watercolor pencil this is 72 they come in 12 they come in 24 they come in 48 they come in 72 and I got the 72 and watercolor pencil this one once you use it you, you you probably can activate this with water but i have a watercolor pencil that you can activate with water and it does exactly like it behaves exactly like 
it behave exactly like watercolor once you activate it once this is um dirt it but we're not going to go further into this because this is i believe you're going further up in your in your skill as a illustrator or as a uh, artist this i'm going to just grab sorry for all the noise i'm just hitting stuff here this is how it works it is also recommended do not do this because that water can go into the wood here and damage your pencils so what you this is i'm just showing you guys quickly i'm just going to move this and show you how oh excuse me it's already mixed it that is what it does there it is so it's just this one is professional quality ink pencil but these are watercolor pencils and i'm gonna let this try because i don't want to save it. i don't want the wood because once the water if the water goes down into the wood it's been advised not to do because it will crack and open up and damage your watercolor pencils so the best way is to draw use it to illustrate or draw and then when you're done excuse me when you're done then you can use the water to um activate it let me show you my watercolor book because i swatched them out here just to show okay the masking fluid that i recommend is the art masking fluid by wilson and newton and lastly these are sketchbook and tracing paper the tracing paper i got is called Conio no i got this as you can see five dollars in the woman clearance section one of the teachers said to me that the ones that is low grade that is very low grade are more see-through you can see through them so it's better than the expensive one so as you can see this is very see-through you can see a lot through it so this you need a tracing paper to transfer sketch so as you can see from my sketchbook here I have this is the last sketch I did and this is it I have traced it in here I've traced it here so with this you can transfer that to your watercolor book and the sketchbook that I'm using is the string and space and this is 200 grams and it is 8 by 11 inches this I got from Amazon I'll leave a link to it it's very beautiful so it's advisable to always practice sketching in a sketchbook but and this is spire next and the last one is your watercolor book I use this to also swatch the colors of my watercolor so I can when I'm illustrating I want to use my um, use this watercolor I, I know what colors they are and I label them if they're opaque or they are transparent and I also um, I can transfer all your sketch you can transfer in here you can transfer it here and then start watercolor so this is 300 grams 300 grams is it's a, it's good for a beginner I know they go can go up to about 650 grams 650 pounds but this is 300